this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and now too, and on today's video we're going to do something which we probably should never ever do, and that is to try and add very small little heat sinks onto the VRM on a relatively budget board. And is it going to make any difference or am I wasting my money? Let's find out. Okay, so on today's video, no expense has been spared. We have spent a whole almost five pounds on 12 of these miniature heat sinks, which have uh, like a self-adhesive backing on them. Now these are designed normally for putting onto things like Raspberry Pis, that sort of thing, just to get a little bit of airflow on them. Now, if some of you may remember, we did a review on this motherboard a little while back. This is the ASUS Prime B550M-K, which comes with a relatively modest VRM and has no coolers on the VRMs whatsoever. So today we're gonna to try and answer the question, do you actually get any better performance is there any benefit whatsoever, or is it purely a cosmetic thing of actually upgrading the VRMs on this particular motherboard? Now, obviously your particular mileage may vary on your individual boards. And certainly I would probably suggest if possible, trying to get slightly more heavy duty versions of this. These actually weigh in at around about two grams each. So uh, yeah, they're relatively lightweight, but I'm hoping there will be some slight improvement but we'll find out as the testing goes on. Now to make this testing even more difficult, hardware info or hardware monitor, whichever the program is I've been using, doesn't actually specifically show the VRM temperatures on this particular board. Now you may find with your own motherboard that the VRM temperature just isn't reported or it just comes up with a random figure and never changes, which essentially is what is going on here where there's two on our setup, temp three and temp nine, which basically don't report exactly what they are. So. So it's actually really hard work to define what is going on. So we're using the uh, somewhat rudimentary method of using an infrared temperature sensor. Now, before you start getting in the comments, which I know you're going to, there's gonna be some of you out there who are gonna get very upset with this. I should be using like a thermocouple, that sort of thing. I don't have one, simple as that. But what I do have is one of these, we've got a motherboard, we've got a little bit of a test bench running and we'll just see if when we stress it under Cinebench with this Ryzen 9 3900X, Actually, if there is any improvement in performance, that is gonna be one of the main, obviously, characteristics. If we get a better score, then it's performing better. More means better, right? At least I hope that is the case. Now, also we're doing this in an open test bench, and we're using the stock Ryzen cooler for this particular processor, which just happens to be a downdraft cooler, which is actually cooling the VRM anyway. So again, if you're using a setup with an all-in-one cooler where there isn't any airflow around the VRMs, then you are still gonna to need to put some airflow in that direction in order for these tiny little heat sinks to actually dissipate any of the heat. So with that said, let's get on with it and see what is going on. Now, before I've actually started filming this, I've done some rudimentary tests. The VRM, which I've been measuring, which is kind of like the third or fourth one up from the top of the set, which you're probably seeing from some B-roll I filmed a little bit earlier. We're getting somewhere in the region of about 67 degrees Celsius, I think it was. You have to watch the footage, and I'm probably gonna have to watch the footage when I'm editing it to see what the exact figure was. But the figure I do know from the Cinebench run is 19194. So yeah, I've just double checked, look back, yes, 19194 is the best score we've had so far with Cinebench. I've done three runs just to see what is going on and also I've done some footage of actual hardware info running. So if you want to pause it and look at any of the things on maybe a large screen, then you can see the differences and obviously you can tell me where I've been going wrong or maybe where I've dialed it in right. So with that said, let's get this thing turned off and we'll attach these things and uh, yeah, see how it goes. Okay, so this is the motherboard, and as you can see, I've got my uh, little VRM heat sinks, or just general heat sinks there. So I'm gonna try and do this one and this one with the airflow kind of channeling outward. So this is our stock cooler, so that's gonna be blowing air outward. And for the ones on this side, I'm gonna turn them around 90 degrees, so the air ch channeling is going that way. I think if I turn them around that way, the first one is gonna hit the, uh, the air, and then the others won't get it. I'm not too sure how that works. I'm guessing like a radiator, so anyway. Now these have got little sticky pads on the bottom, 3M tape, which apparently is suitable for this particular process. You can use thermal glue, but then they may be a little bit more difficult to actually remove. So, so peeling off the uh, 3M tape, as you can see, there is some uh, sticky goo on there. So this is gonna be actually very tricky for me to try and line this up. So I'm gonna do the best I can. I have measured the actual VRM MOSFETs or whatever they are here. And it's roughly about 12 millimeters, maybe 14 millimeters square. So I'm gonna try and get that lined up and get that so it looks about right. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's making contact. 
give it a little push down and uh, yeah, make sure it's straight. So there we go, there's the first one. So now I just have to repeat the process all the way around. So that is one side done. So now we can do the other side. Those are spaced out a little bit more. But again, we should have some contact area. So this one, we've got four chips there. Looks good. And time for the last one. This one doesn't have to be quite as perfect because of where it physically is. It's a little bit further away from the other one. You can, if you want, obviously get a measuring device or some sort of straight edge to put along there. Make sure they're all straight. But I think that actually looks all right. If I angle that up. Yeah, I think that looks pretty clean and actually matches the board really nicely with the uh, Asus cooler, which is down here at the bottom. So yeah, looks very good. That is our six phases or four plus two phases with the heat sinks on. Yeah, I think that's a pretty decent job, but is it actually gonna prove beneficial? Moment of truth time, let's find out. didn't blow up. Okay, so that is the testing done, and this, uh, to be honest with you, is not very conclusive, I'll be completely honest with you. Although doing Cinebench runs are not always the best way of testing a system's performance and stability, as we all know, long-term testing really does need to be done. But initial testing, we have managed to improve the score. Now, whether or not that was a complete fluke or not, I have no idea whatsoever. The only thing I do know for sure is that our infrared thermal tester now shows somewhere in the region of about a 20 degree drop in surface temperatures for the actual heat sinks. So obviously that is not going to be a pure reading because the transfer, etc., etc. So the VRMs underneath are still going to be getting pretty toasty. It's just they are actually being allowed to transmit some of that thermal load out into the metal. The metal is then touching the convection of the airflow and thus you have a cooling effect. So best case scenario, it's going to make the components last a little bit longer. Potentially, if you're doing particularly long kind of rendering runs or you've got your system on all the time and you're doing something, you may increase the lifespan of the components due to the reduction in temperatures. In terms of actual physical, real world, tangible details, mm, yeah, not much difference. We uh, worked out it's somewhere around about 70 points gained. So, yeah, not ideal. Although saying that, as some of you have probably already seen on the screens from some of the previous results, originally with the actual test, we got somewhere in the region about 17,800 or 17,900. So with the uh, enhancements turned on in the BIOS, which uh, you're probably seeing from the thing, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the video, we have turned on precision boost overclocking is set to enabled rather than auto. And also Asus's own performance enhancement is kind of in its unleashed mode. So yeah, we've gone effectively from just a shade under 18,000 points to now get into kind of 19,200. So there is a tangible difference and thermally it's able to cope with it on this very effectively modest motherboard. So yeah, it's done that. We've essentially wasted a fiver, but it's all in the aid of finding out if it actually makes any difference. I think possibly with larger heat sinks, it might have made a slightly bigger difference. Let me know in the video comments below. If you actually want to see this video redone with actually a more decent sized heatsink, I'm definitely interested to see if that will work out, possibly one which is a little bit higher so it catches more airflow, although realistically I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But anyway, there you go. Realistically, if you want your motherboard to arguably look a little bit nicer, it's probably worth the five pounds alone and potentially, like I said, you may get a little bit of a longer lifespan out of your motherboard being that those components are a little bit cooler, but they are designed to go up to 105 degrees Celsius, so we were well within that anyway. This is actually a pretty decent board in that regard. But anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. I'll also put links for these little stick-on coolers in the video description. You can use them for all sorts. You can stick them on the VRMs like we've done here, put them on the chokes, which I've actually done as well. So we've added some to the chokes because those were getting to about 55 degrees Celsius. Now they've dropped down to about 40. So a little bit of a cooling effect on the chokes as well, which again is 
every little bit helps, I guess. But anyway, yeah, there we go. We've wasted some time and hopefully this has passed uh, 15, 20 minutes for you to pass your day by. If you've got any comments, you know where to put them in the comment section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in part two. Thanks for watching.